I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Evan Shapiro, CEO and co-founder of the O1 Labs and the Coda Blockchain. Evan, thank you so much for being on the show. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Let's start by understanding a little bit more about the Coda Blockchain project. Can you, first of all, explain the solutions uh, that Coda provides and what makes it different in the industry? Yeah, sure. Um, so the, the challenge is that, I mean, the core property these protocols have is decentralization. And this property is sort of like under threat and not exactly where we want it to be for a lot of crypto projects. In particular, like uh, you, the only way to really have full permissionless access to a chain is if you download the whole history. Uh, that's the only way you can fully verify it. Uh, but this is out of the reach of most people and is be increasingly becoming out of the reach of like basically anyone unless you have like a big uh, company to like run and download a whole blockchain. They're hundreds of gigabytes, mm -hmm. uh, bordering on terabytes for a lot of them. And, and that's just kind of like unreasonable for like, especially if like you want to use these things permissionlessly on your phone or on your browser. Um, and like, never mind access, like participation is just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, we've built a cryptocurrency with a very, very small blockchain that's only the size of like a few kilobytes using zero knowledge proofs. Mm -hmm. um, and this lets you download that zero knowledge proof instead of downloading the hundreds of gigabytes of the entire chain. And it gives you full verifiability of Coda, our blockchain, um, as well as like permissionless access because you can just check the little proof and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting, Evan. I know the Bitcoin blockchain is like a terabyte or more. And if you want to actually be a network participant and be able to validate transactions, then you have to have the whole blockchain. You're right. And it's totally unfeasible to have it on a computer. Um, however, in that blockchain is you know, a, a record of all the transactions from, from the beginning of time. Um, so it's interesting what you've done with Coda uh, with the zero knowledge proofs. Essentially, you've taken a snapshot of uh, transactions and, you know, and you're basing the new transactions off of that snapshot rather than the transactions themselves. So you don't really need to download them uh, on your computer or on your device. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, if you think about like the system today, like you don't need like your transaction history, like three years ago to use your credit card. You need to know what your current balance is. You need to trust like your balance. You like the uh, merchant's balance. You need to trust everyone's balances. And you need to be able to check the transaction actually goes through, but you don't need to know like three years ago what was happening. Mm -hmm. That can be like an auditor or someone. Yeah, definitely. So that's been a huge uh, downfall for people that are looking to run full nodes. Um, and there is this level of decentralization where there's enough for in Ethereum, for example, there's 30,000 different nodes that are verifying transactions, but there's hundreds of thousands of different participants. Now, does everybody that is a participant in the network need to run a node or should they? Is that what Coda believes? I mean, we think so. I mean, it really depends, right? Like. There's two ways to think of using cryptocurrency. There's maybe a few ways to use cryptocurrency right now, but like the two that we care about is like everyone should be able to participate fully. There shouldn't just be like, you know, a consortium or cartel of people who run the chain. So anyone should be able to do it. You should be able to do it. I should be able to do it. Everyone. And then also, um, it should be the case that you should be able to access it permissionlessly. So right now, if you use Ethereum, you have to like basically ask in Fira for permission if you're a developer, and you have to go through in Fira if you're like a consumer, um, or through Coinbase or whatever. Um, and it's not really using this technology the way it's like can fully be possible. It's the, the real potential is everyone accesses up permissionlessly no matter where they are, no matter mm -hmm. who they are. But, but, but it's not really the case right now with the, um, the way these systems are set up. Yeah, that's really interesting. And a lot of people are familiar with Ethereum because it's uh, so large and has a large community. And right now, the consensus algorithm for Ethereum is proof of work and they're moving to proof of stake. Is there a, a similar consensus algorithm for people to uh, verify transactions on Coda, um, or is it different because you don't have that size there? Yeah, so it's actually um, you do need to like when you're designing the consensus algorithm, take into account that you have to apply it to a chain that's going to be backed by zero knowledge proof. But with zero knowledge proofs, you can express any computation, so you can kind of convert any consensus algorithm to being zero knowledge proof compatible um, with, with a, enough work. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, we use proof of stake in um, in Coda, in particular, a variant called Ouroboros, um, which lets like any number of people basically participate in the consensus. Mm -hmm. um, so we're actually doing a thing called the Genesis program right now, where we're looking mm -hmm. to bring on at least a thousand people mm -hmm. onto the all before mainnet, so they can like get a grant of tokens and be part of like the initial like staking cohort. That's great, and that leads into my next question on you know developer activity. 
to have mainstream adoption of a blockchain, it, you really need to have developers that are developing applications that people are going to use. Um, are there incentives for developers to move from developing on Ethereum or EOS to developing on Coda now? I mean, like, not at the moment. There's, like, nothing we've announced. And, like, really, honestly, like, the way I kind of think about it right now is developing on a cryptocurrency right now is very hard. There's a lot of things, technologies you have to learn about and chain together if you want to really build something. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's why the incentives need to be there right now. It's just really hard. I, I think that, like, with what we're doing, um, it should be way easier to build something, at least we're hoping. Um, mm -hmm. And with that, um, we're hoping, like, it's just, like, a still lower barrier to, to a barrier of effort that you can start building something, maybe something that you can even have revenue off of or, like, you know, uh, something that can be successful uh, with less effort than if you had to, um, you know, figure out the whole Infura, MetaMask, Web3 stack. Definitely. And with Ethereum, it was made in a way that developers needed to learn Solidity, which was a whole new programming language just to, you know, build on Ethereum, whereas Neo has all these system development kits that, you know, you can build a library of programming languages that many developers that aren't familiar with blockchain already know. Is it easy for developers that aren't in blockchain to come to Coda, or do they need to have uh, technical knowledge about blockchains to be able to develop? That's the intent, yeah. Um, our current API uses something called GraphQL, which is, like, accessible basically anywhere. Um, and, like, as we, like, start um, implementing and adding support for, like, full, like, you know, more programmability, that'll hopefully, or it will be in, like, JavaScript and other Python and things like that as a library you can, like, call into versus, like, another programming language you have to learn. Mm -hmm. yeah. And right now, Coda is in its testnet stage, uh, if I'm correct. What's the uh, timeline been since you, ha when did you first start working on the project and when did you guys launch the testnet? Oh man, so it's it's it was a while. So uh, I think like maybe like June 2017, uh, we started working on it. Um, and by start working, I mean like we like sat down to code like in in our living rooms and started building. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't until I guess like July 2019 that we like launched the public version of like the testnet. So it was like two years of development and like uh, yeah <laughs> to get to where we are now, and then. Uh, it's, it's been like you know six or so months since then where we've gotten to like a pretty stable place and we're just adding features and that stuff. That's great. And what does the development roadmap look like moving forward? Uh, is there an estimated time for the main net? And are there a bunch of things that you need to develop before you get to that point? Yeah. So like the test net's like basically in, in phases. Um, so we're in like phase three of what should be five total phases right now. Uh, so this phase currently is about like. Um, making the experience extremely good for like node operators like those genesis people we mentioned we want to bring people in for that we want to just like make an incredibly good experience for operating a node um and add features to support that um what's coming up next is like our phase four and phase four is going to um basically be a test of the economics of the system as well as like adding in some more development sdk kind of features and then we have phase five and then phase five is going to be like a full like adversarial like test net um where we're really going to like test to make sure it's like super secure before we launch it. That's great. And do you already have a community of developers? Uh, are they are they already starting to work on applications on Coda, or it's all just you know on the foundational layer right now? Oh, we're, we're, I like it, right now. We're basically everyone's working on like kind of node operator level stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we think like building a strong community around there and participation is like the place to go, and we'll build from there. Um, so like not like end user apps, but like little tools for like uh, node operators. Mm -hmm. That's great. And and what kind of partnerships have you guys closed, or are you looking to close to bring the Coda blockchain into the mainstream world for for enterprises or for customers, or how do you foresee that playing out? Nothing we've announced yet. I think like um, there probably will be things, um, but at the moment it's just kind of like we want to bring in like hobbyists and like grassroots community people because uh, mm -hmm. we think that's like where this technology can get started, um, yeah. That's great. And do you have uh, any idea when the mainnet's launched, whether there will be specific use cases or industries uh, that this would be best applied to, or are you letting developers just free roam and, and develop whatever they wish using the, the protocol? I mean, like, I, I think there's like a lot of possibilities. So we want people to build whatever the heck they want. Like, <laughs> I think that's exciting. Um, but like, I think the two directions that I'm most excited about, which are kind of, um, Complementary, 
Uh, one is like using zero knowledge proofs for verifiability. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one is like um, value transfer related things where you just have like a ton of tokens permissionlessly accessible. Um, just like you can just like deploy with a snippet of JavaScript onto yeah. like the web. Um, I, I think that like both zero knowledge proofs is going to be important for like finance in the future, as well as like permissionless tokens are going to be really important for mm -hmm. finance in the future. Um, and I think like yeah, that, that's like the, the direction my 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 mind is going for what I want people to be building with this stuff. I think it's where the technology is most exciting, at least today. Mm -hmm. Very cool, Evan. And as the mainnet launches, uh, what will the coin or token infrastructure look like? Is there going to be a, a Coda coin, which will also have tokens that will be able to be built on the Coda blockchain, similar to how Ethereum runs? Yeah, basically. I mean, um, you could think of it sort of as like a, when I say tokens, like a parallel architecture to like Ethereum and their tokens. Mm -hmm. um, there's a Coda token that um, is used for staking, used for um, making snarks on the network, these zero knowledge proofs, making the blockchain small, needs someone to make snarks. Um, and you can imagine there being other tokens on top as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And with the blockchain ecosystem right now, there's been a bit of uh, uh, interest from other blockchains to introduce interoperability with Ethereum or EOS. Um, do you foresee being able to connect to Ethereum at all or more so looking for a standalone project? And that would require creating your own wallets, um, I believe, as well. Could you touch on that? Yeah, I mean, I think that things are so early, it's okay. To st like, I think in general, things should be interoperable. But I think like when we launch, like it's going to just be like a whole new cool thing, and it's okay to be standalone for a bit. Yeah. Um, but I think in the like the medium term, even like I want to have interoperability, um, and we have some cool ways of doing that. I think through zero knowledge proofs, because you can really prove things about what's happening on the other chain through the zero knowledge proofs, like in a very succinct, uh, efficient way. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, that won't. That'll probably uh, happen farther out. Maybe someone from the community will probably end up helping. Um, it's a uh, yeah, bigger project. Great. And what challenges do you foresee uh, as you continue to grow to the mainnet and beyond, uh, which lay in the a lay ahead for Coda? I mean, I think like I guess like our vision for the project is is fairly big. <laughs> so it's uh, there's a lot we want to get done and. Um, there's just like, um, you know, we really want to like um, see this network launch with like a lot of participants, not just like a few dozen people, but like hundreds, really thousands of people participating in the network. Uh, I think that like that'll be an interesting exercise in like what will the community look like with like, you know, yeah. thousands of people in it uh, that are all running like nodes and stuff. I think that'll be really exciting. Um, and then also like um, I, I, I think that we're still in the very early days of like developing with cryptocurrency. I think like mm -hmm. there's been a lot of like great things happening so far, but like we want to like kind of push that ahead and get it out to like a lot more people that are building a lot more things all over the internet. I think that's also kind of, um, you know, new territory. So uh, it's, it's exciting, but it's also, uh, you know, new challenges. It's fun. Definitely. And that is exciting. Um, so what is your current uh, development team and your whole team? You know, how large is your team and are you expanding developers as you move towards the mainnet? Yeah, um, we are. So we're like um, in house, like at O of One Labs, like twenty five, and then in the community, like uh, you know, more people than that, like uh, maybe in the order of like a hundred or a couple hundred people. Nice. Um, in house, um, I guess, like I said, twenty five people. Like most of them, like nineteen or so, are developers. Um, we mostly do OCaml for the actual protocol, um, and yeah, we're we're hiring. <laughs> if people know OCaml, functional programming, they like blockchain. Yeah. That's great. And that was my next question. Uh, are you looking for mainly developers right now or more strategic partners or investors or anything else? Um, developers, people that want to join the community, like um, we're extremely open about like, you know, if you want to like, you know, a, a, apply to, to, to work, that's like at one Labs, it's awesome. If you want to just like join the community, all of our developments like completely out in the open, like, mm -hmm. you know, everyone just like is like it's a discord. You can just check it out on our website, get a link to it. And like, just like everything happens, just like on our public Discord server. So, like, however you want to get involved, it's it's uh, it's there. Great. Uh, and that was leading me to my next question: is how what is the best way for them to reach out? Um, I'm guessing your Discord, or is there any other locations as well? Um, the Discord. Um, I think the Genesis program is like a really good opportunity for people that like like are interested in running nodes. Um, it's like, I think it's like equivalent to like 187 2080 Ti GPUs stake. For Ethereum's hash power for the Genesis program, mm -hmm. um, I think that makes sense. So, um, 
so I think it's like a good opportunity, and I think um, we would really like to see more people. Um, we had a ton of interest, but like even more people that want to run nodes and stuff. That's like our like we want everyone to participate. Uh, so that's also on our website. Great. Well, I'll leave the link to your Discord as well as the website in the description box below. And that's all the time that we have today, Evan. But I really appreciate you coming on and sharing uh, the information about Coda. And looks like uh, your team is well on its way towards the mainnet. So best of luck in pursuing that. And let's follow up in the near future. Great. Okay. Thank you very much.